Thank you very much, Mike, for that very kind introduction, overly generous introduction. I, uh, I am back, at least for the time being at Heritage. But it, was, it is wonderful to be here with so many old and new friends from Korea. We've, we have esteemed members from the National Assembly with us. We have representatives of Action for Korea United as one of our host groups. I was fortunate, very fortunate indeed, to meet with you earlier in Seoul in previous years. I also want to acknowledge my friend Preston Moon and longtime friend in the common cause of freedom and Korean unification. Other assembled co-conveners, including the Global Peace Foundation, AKU, the East-West Institute, one Korea Foundation, and guests from both the international community and from here in the United States. It's an historic time in the bilateral relationship. Just last week, our president, Donald J. Trump, and the ROK president, Moon Jae-in, had an historic summit meeting in Seoul for the first time in 25 years. And first time for a a state visit, at least from a U.S. president in 25 years. This important meeting affirmed that the longstanding ties that bind our countries and our people are as robust today as they have been in the historic past. A critical objective in addressing the current North Korean nuclear threat is to expand our alliance throughout the Indo-Pacific region as we work together to establish a lasting solution to this crisis. As many of you may know, during the last presidential transition, I had the pleasure and honor to work for candidate Donald Trump as one of his senior policy advisors. Since his election, I've had a number of unique private occasions to get together with the president again, including a special gathering just last month with the Heritage Foundation's annual President's Club here in Washington. Last week, I was delighted and encouraged to hear the President's forward-looking speech to all of you from the Korean National Assembly. I read that speech with great interest. I watched it live on television, and I was particularly moved when he elaborated and said, Korea stands strong and tall among the great community of independent, confident, and peace-loving nations. We affirm the dignity of every person and embrace the full potential of every soul. We are always prepared to defend the vital interests of our people against the cruel ambition of tyrants. Together, we dream of a Korea that is free, a peninsula that is safe, and families that are reunited once again. We dream of highways connecting north and south, of cousins embracing cousins, and this nuclear nightmare replaced with the beautiful promise of peace. Until that day comes, we stand strong and alert. Our eyes are fixed to the north and our hearts praying for the day when all Koreans can live in freedom. How fitting President Trump's words are for today's special forum. In previous forums, with Action for Korea United and the Global Peace Foundation, I observed the vibrant power of civil society engagements that Mike has mentioned before, civil society to establish peace and security. Since its founding, my colleagues and I at the Heritage Foundation, likewise, have recognized the importance of civic engagement as it has worked for more than four decades to advance in America where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and civil society flourish. Your grassroots people power approach is one that I had advocated some decades ago during my tenure as chairman of the U.S. Advisory Commission on Public Diplomacy under the presidencies of Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Well, as we work together, through this international forum to establish freedom and peaceful reunification on the Korean Peninsula. It's inspiring to see the broad spectrum of participants that have been assembled here today. 
I'm confident this effort will elicit broad-based support throughout the citizenry, both here in the United States and in Korea, as we use every avenue to disseminate information about this compelling vision and the power of freedom whose time has really come. Last year, I was honored and delighted to write the foreword to Preston Moon's inspiring book, Korean Dream, A Vision for a Unified Korea. I commend it to all of you as a compelling source of information on the historical foundation and the continuing strategic importance of a unified and a free Korea. Dr. Moon notes the centrality of the principles and the values entailed in his vision, which, like those of America's founding, are inalienable and God-given, and when championed through a citizen-led movement, are ultimately irrepressible. Indeed, President Trump summoned the international community to stand behind such an approach in his address to the Korean National Assembly in Seoul when he was welcomed by our distinguished co-panelists, Assemblyman Lee and Shin, representing both the governing and the minority parties. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my very great pleasure to introduce for his keynote address, Dr. Hyunjin Preston Moon, founder and chairman of the Global Peace Foundation. I'd like to note, in light of the forthcoming Winter Olympics in the Republic of Korea, that there was a time not too long ago that Dr. Moon represented in a previous Summer Olympics Games in Seoul and Barcelona, the Republic of Korea, in equestrian events, something that may not be known to all of you. The principal leadership that Dr. Moon is investing in realizing the vision of the Korean dream has also been reflected in his many philanthropic roles, as well as in his deep devotion to faith and family. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Moon.